Okay, let's see how the Zero Breeze Mark II runs off of my Goal Zero Yeti 1000. Looks like just being plugged in, we're pulling about 8 watts. And as the compressor comes on and the fan ramps up, we can watch this wattage steadily increase. It came up to about 144 watts at normal AC and about 75% fan speed. At this rate on normal cool at about 75% fan speed, the Goal Zero Yeti is saying we have about seven and a half hours left in the battery. Raising it up to full fan, we're going to come up to about 144 watts. All right, let's see what strong mode does. We got that definite change in compressor sound. It looks like we're up to 152 watts. And up to 12 point three amps so right now we're in strong mode the mark ii is showing a 40 degree outlet temperature and it looks like we're drawing 152 watts and the yeti is saying it will last for 6.3 hours i had forgotten that putting it on strong mode drops the fan speed so kicking in that last notch of fan speed is going to get us up to about 160 watts or so running in strong mode for a while now and everything is looking good yeti 1000 is still showing me it's going to run for about six hours The temperature of the power supply hasn't changed very much. The Yeti hasn't warmed up much at all. And the inlet and exhaust of the Yeti 1000 are showing about ambient temperature in the room. So I've got the Mark II running off the Yeti's inverter right now, which is less efficient than running it straight DC. When I get a 12 to 24 volt boost converter, I'll be using this cable to plug into the converter. This is Goal Zero's max current cable. It allows you to plug into all of the output ports on the Yeti, combining each 10 amp output into a max of 40 amps at this Anderson plug. I had to use this maximum current cable plugged into my homemade power cable because the original Zero Breeze Mark I wouldn't stay running on the Yeti directly on any of the DC ports. Goal Zero sent me a 12 volt regulated power supply thinking that the unregulated native outputs on the Yeti were the cause of the problem, but that didn't help. The max current cable did, however, keep the air conditioner running. And now that the Mark II has been switched from 12 volts to 24 volts over the original, I'll just have to add that 12 volt to 24 boost converter in line. But we'll save that for another day. Back to normal mode after running on boost mode for a while, and we're back down to about 153 watts. The Yeti's still showing six hours of runtime at this output. I think once I get this thing in a hot car, that'll lower drastically with the increased power demands, but uh, even if I can get five hours out of this 1,000, I think I'll be happy with that. So let's see how all this works with solar panels. This is my homemade 200-watt solar suitcase made from two 100-watt rich solar panels. I've got it all hooked up, and with the sun low in the sky, I'm bringing in about 150 watts.
So with the Mark II running on normal mode at full fan, it looks like I'm bringing in about enough power to run this continuously without draining the battery at all. Turning on boost mode. And if the sun was high in the sky, I'm sure I wouldn't have any problem maintaining a full battery and running the air conditioner all day. And my outside patio thermometer is currently showing 65 degrees. And let's go back down to normal mode. And if this can maintain a 20 degree temperature drop in those conditions, with the amount of air that comes out of the front of this, this could be a life changer. So fingers crossed. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and more tests to come.